They don't even really understand what they're doing. They, you know, I was a controller, but I did it for fear of getting hurt. See, I grew up with a father who controlled everything, and everything that he did was for his benefit, and everybody else got hurt. So I thought I learned that if you stay in control, then you're the one that doesn't get hurt. And so people that are controllers are not necessarily wicked. They may just be afraid that if they don't stay in control, somebody's going to take advantage of them. And you say, well, they will. Well, here's the thing. I'm not going to stand here and ask you to trust people because people will hurt you, but we can trust God. So you give up trying to control everything and you put yourself in God's hands and you say, well, God, even if they mistreat me, it's actually your problem because you're the one that's got to fix it. Somewhere we got to, got to get out of the middle of all this and turn ourselves over to God and say, you are my vindicator and you're the one that's going to have to fix what's wrong in my life and I am finished trying to control everything. You show me what you want me to do and I'm going to do what you want me to do and I'm not responsible for what everybody else does anymore. Does anybody need this today? Just maybe one or two people. Our wounded people get very good at living a life of pretense, never expressing their true feelings or thoughts about anything. They just simply do what they think everybody wants them to do so they can keep them happy. And then after you do that for a while, then you begin to resent all these people that are controlling you when you're the one that's letting them do it. Dr. Henry Cloud said, you'll have what you tolerate. It's time for some of you to start standing up for yourself. You've never done it in your whole life, and you're bitter because of it, but you have what you put up with. Sooner or later, you got to say, I deserve respect, and you're either going to give it to me, Oh, we're not going to be hanging out so much anymore. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about attitude, and people that are wounded usually have bad attitudes. Um, for one thing, they're usually pretty negative. They're usually almost afraid to think that anything good might happen because they've had such a long history of bad things happening that if you're anything like I was, you get to the point where you think to expect a problem, you're protecting yourself. You don't want to get disappointed anymore. Does anybody know what I mean? It's like, so you just have a sour attitude. But even though you may not be able to change all the circumstances in your life, your attitude belongs to you. It's yours and yours alone. And nobody can make you have a bad one if you refuse to have one. And I'll tell you, when you start having a good attitude, then God can start doing things for you that will amaze you. The Bible has a great deal to say about attitude. And attitude is just the, the, the thought response that you decide to take toward a situation or a circumstance of what has happened to you. Like, 
For years, I hated my father for what he did to me. And one day God whispered in my heart, hurting people hurt people. And then I realized that he hurt me because somebody had hurt him. And it made it so much easier for me to start working toward forgiveness. If you'll have a good attitude, God can show you things. He can tell you secrets. He can make you understand things that will set you free. The Bible says, let this same attitude that was in Christ Jesus be in you. Let him be your example in selfless humility. Well, two things that wounded people have a difficult time with is being unselfish because we're afraid if we don't take care of ourselves, nobody else will. And humility is out of the question because you see humility as weakness and you think if you humble yourself, then everybody's going to walk all over you. Am I right so far? See, real life starts, listen to me, when you're not trying to prove anything anymore. And then I want us to look at verse 6, Philippians 2, 6, in the Amplified Bible. These are pretty cool. It says, who, although he existed in the form, an unchanging essence of God as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, the entire nature of deity. Think about Jesus, God himself, coming down here willingly to get in a human body. The best analogy I could think of is that would be like me agreeing to go be an ant. And that's a poor example. He laid aside his, he didn't lay aside his God in this because he never got rid of it, but he, he set that part of him aside and he took on a human form so he could relate to us and pay the price for our sins. But I'll, let, let's finish reading this. He did not regard his equality with God as something that he had to grasp as if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. Look at that. As if he did not already possess it or was afraid of losing it. You see, Jesus could do what he did because he knew who he was. He wasn't trying to prove who he was. He knew where he came from. He knew where he was going. He knew he was on assignment from God. And he, God, was able to come here and take on the form of a servant. See, and people who know who they are can do any job and not feel belittled by it. Come on. If you know who you are in Christ, you can be the janitor and know that you are just as important as the CEO of the company. It doesn't matter. You can live in a mansion or you can live in an apartment because your joy is not in what you own or who you know or the label in your clothes. Let me tell you something. It is amazingly freeing when you come to the point of saying, I, God loves me. I'm his child. I'm not an accident. He created me. He has a purpose for me. And maybe people have spent their whole life trying to destroy me, but he is my healer and I am on my way back. Amen. Your history doesn't have to be your destiny. I did not have a good start in life. And many of you did not have a good start in life. But it's really how you finish that people remember. And no matter how you got started, you can have a phenomenal ending. Let go of what's behind and get on with what God has for you. Amen. Now, as I said, wounded people have trouble with humility because to them, it's a sign of weakness, but actually humility is defined as strength under control. <laughs> Jesus could have done anything at any time, just like he told Peter when they came into the garden to take him away and 
Peter quickly got out his sword and cut off the ear of one of the guys, and Jesus had to put the ear back on and take care of that and <laughs> tell Peter, don't you know if I wanted to, I could call legions of angels. I don't have to do this. I'm doing this because it's what my father wants me to do. So here's the thing. If I, I don't know, what I, whatever, I mean, it, if you like to clean, some people love to clean. I mean, I have a girl that cleans me sometimes. It's just, she loves to clean. It's like, bless you, because I don't love it. And see, we all love something. God has got this all arranged to where every need would be taken care of if we could get rid of our stupid pride and just do the part that God has given us to do without feeling like it belittles us. Are you out there? See, some of you, the last thing in the world that you would ever want would be to be in charge of something, but you think that you're not as good as the person that's in charge, so you try to be in charge, and it makes you miserable the whole time. Come on. My husband one time was offered a promotion at work, and he turned it down, and I thought he was stark raving mad. Because I was still had all my baggage, and I thought, man, the, the more important you look, the more important you are. You know, the, if you're the boss, then wow, everybody else has got to do what you tell them to. Wounded people like to tell everybody else what to do. And he turned it down, and I thought he was nuts. And he said, I, I don't want that. He said, why do I want all that hassle? I'm not even going to make that much more money. I'm going to have to travel. And I'm going to have all kinds of responsibility. I'm happy right where I'm at. Well, I couldn't understand anybody being happy right where they were at because I, my whole worth and value came from doing more and climbing the ladder and being better and being bitter and better and being better than better than. And I couldn't just be good. I had to be better than you. Come on. See, God has met every need. Everybody has a part and everybody wants to do their part if we could get rid of attaching our worth and value to what we do and what the world says is important and what the world says is not important. Don't ever say, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. 